Hey guys, Dan here from Your Guitar Academy and welcome back to this last lesson in Unit 2 of our Eric Clapton course. And we're going to be now just looking at a couple of linking patterns. So a big thing when you learn how to play like Eric Clapton is learning to obviously play those five pentatonic shapes, but also where to link them so you can create quite kind of fast runs, you know, going from one end to the other end of the fretboard. And these are... These are kind of learn, you know, Clapton took these from great players like Muddy Waters, like John Lee Hooker, like Albert King, like Freddie King. Um, and he's applied them to his own playing. He's put his own spin on it and just made it extra cool, especially in the cream stuff. So these are really well used patterns that I'm going to show you now. So pick up your guitar and let's get started. everyone, if you've just tuned in, then please remember that you can find the full write-up, including the fretboard diagrams, the tabs, the backing tracks, and everything else over on the website, absolutely free. The link will be below the video in the description. Plus, if you're on YouTube, then please do like and subscribe to the page. Leave us a comment. We do our best to get back to every single comment that you guys make. Thanks. Okay, guys, so we're going to dive straight into these linking patterns. And all things said and done, they're going to look like this. <laughs> and as you can see, I'm kind of messing around a little bit with the rhythms. I'm not too fussed about the exact rhythms used here, just how to play these patterns, okay? And in the last lesson, at the end of the last lesson, we talked a little bit about the kind of blues note, just a little bit, just as a reference of why we're learning in the way we are. Um, and now I want to show you why actually that particular blues note is so important in this linking pattern. Because basically what we're using here is the same link every single time we move shapes, okay? So from shape five to shape one, same link. Shape one to two, same link. Shape three to four, same link. Shape four to five, same link. And that link is the flat five, okay? It works because it's the blues note. It's as notorious as the blues note. So whenever you hear kind of, you might hear riffs using the blues note. You know, you'll hear licks using the blues note. You know, you might even hear, um, You'll hear it in country music in a major setting. So many places you'll hear this blues note. And it's essentially, it's the flat five of the minor pentatonic. So the minor pentatonic's got the fourth and the fifth, and you insert the flat five between those two. So here's the fourth, here's the fifth, and you add in the flat five. The crucial part of it, why it's kind of typically called a blues note, is because it's very much like a passing note. Uh, and in the blues, we, we love out notes. We love notes that are passing, which create a bit more tension, um, that then get resolved on, you know, the roots or the or the fifths or whatever resolve you want to do afterwards. Okay, um, and this happens to be one that's used a lot in the blues, and therefore it has been given this term, the blues note. Okay, but really it's just an out note, a note that's not in the scale, not in the minor pentatonic scale, that we can add as a passing tone. <laughs> You know, we wouldn't end on it. You know, but we would go. You know, we'd use it as a kind of out note that resolves to something else, okay? Now, when we use it in this linking pattern, we literally slide through it every time. So wherever you find your fourth degree, you're gonna slide through the flat five and hit the five. That way, that grace note slide. Okay, so in this instance, the first pattern, we're actually going to start in kind of box five here. So we're going to do the root note, so we're going to miss the flat seven. We're going to do the root note, flat third, and then as we hit that fourth degree, we slide through that blues note up to the fifth. Okay, and crucially here, we only hear one note. So one, two, three, not one, two, three, four. If you want to give it that kind of clapped an edge, 
Make sure you slide through it, okay? So one, two, three. That takes us to the fifth degree. Then flat seven, we're now in box one. Root. Flat third. And here's the fourth again. So we're gonna slide up to the fifth, kind of going through that flat five. Then we're gonna go, so fifth, flat seven, root. And there we are, kind of near the top of box two. So you need to visualize that. So we've got box five, one, two. And the same thing goes on the way back. So we're going to go root, flat, seven. And then when we hit the five, we slide back to the four. Okay. So with a drum beat, that first one sounds like this. Two, three, and four, and. On the way back, three, four. Do it again. Three, four. Two, three, four. Okay. And what I'd like you guys to do is as you're doing this, every now and again, just stop. So stop. Where are you? Can you can you see? that you're in that box one pentatonic. If you can, then carry on. Stop, where are you? Box two. I'm on the fifth degree of box two. Flat seven, root. And then carry on. That's a really cool little exercise, okay? Now, the other linking pattern is a bit higher up in the key of A minor anyway, and it starts on the root note on the A string. So A on the A string is of course up on the 12th fret, or the open string, but we're gonna do it on the 12th fret. And here again, you go through box three first. So remember, your box three is there. So box three, root, flat third. As I hit the fourth, I'm gonna slide up to the five, going through that blues note. Now I'm in box four. Then I'm gonna do flat seven, root, flat third, and then as I hit the four, I'm gonna slide up to the five, then the flat seven, and then the root. So I get this. On the way back, same thing, root, flat seven, five slides back to the four, flat third, root, flat seven, Five slides back to the four, flat third, root. So you get this. And then in reverse. Okay, so again, you need to visualize all of those shapes. So I'm thinking, okay, I've got my shape three, shape four, shape five. And what a great way to just fly through those. You know, bringing in your licks as well. So if we put a drum beat on with that, again, just in case you're wondering, I'm up 60 BPM here, so I'm taking it nice and slowly to really learn this well. Four, and. And on the way back down, three, four. Okay, so again, try and stop yourself. So, so stop, where am I? Well, I'm currently on the flat seven of the box four, so I can play the whole of box four. I'm in box five. Okay, and so on, and you can keep running that. And then when you want to have a little bit of fun with that, you know, you can get, of course, your little, a little jam track on. So if I did a... Oh, sorry. Let's do that again. And I just wanted to play around with that. Root. 
flat seven, down to the four, and then you can break it up. You can hang around in one shape for ages. And when you do, you just get those classic Clapton tones, right? So you can really have some super duper fun playing around with that. So I would say learn the exercise as is, you know, just everything in A minor, okay? Test yourself, stop in various places. Can you say what pentatonic shape you're in? And on top of that, can you go one better? Can you say what degree of that pentatonic shape you're on? Are you on the flat third? Are you on the root? Where are you within that? And then play through that box and then carry on with the exercise. And then pop on a backing track in A minor or A blues and just have fun seeing how you can actually quite quickly recreate those Clapton sounds from Cream um, by using such a simple method. All, that's clap all, all that Clapton has done, Eric Clapton has done, is he's taken that concept, which is relatively basic, but he's just mastered it. He's just made it sound, he's so confident with that, he makes it absolutely sing, and you can do too. Just put the practice in. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching that. Remember, please do like and subscribe to the YouTube channel as well as leave a comment and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. If you want the next lesson, you'll find it right here. If you're looking to start the whole course from scratch, you'll find the playlist right here. See you next time.